He's here and he's perfect. Gabriel Jesus is officially an Arsenal player. Signing a five-year contract at the Emirates Stadium, it's a signing which has a lot of excitement, but also its fair share of expectations. So let's find out today why exactly have Arsenal signed him. Let's also get an update on a potential move for Serge Gnabry. Could Arsenal make a move for Paulo Dybala? And what is the latest on Lissandro Martinez? Yo, what is going on guys? My name is Babs14 and welcome back to your boys channel. It is a beautiful day as Arsenal have finally announced a certain someone but in my last video I spoke about a giveaway. So the first giveaway of three on this channel starts off with a brand new Arsenal home kit. If you guys want to win this all you have to do is like this video, subscribe to the channel, comment below how many goals do you think Gabriel Jesus will score next season and most importantly follow me on my Instagram. That that is the key part because it is on that platform where I'll be able to contact you and get this giveaway sorted. But into the Arsenal transfer news and starting off with Gabriel Jesus. Mikel Arteta's priority going into this transfer window was to acquire the services of the player. And after a long pursuit where Tottenham came in and Chelsea came in, Real Madrid showed interest. Finally, we can say that Jesus is officially an Arsenal player. As Arsenal announced Nosso Novo Numero Nove, translating the our new number nine as he puts pen to paper to a five-year bumper near £200,000 a week contract. Samba sensational scenes at the Emirates Stadium and Gabriel Jesus is a player as we spoke about is a man that Arteta wanted and he says, I am very excited. This club has done a tremendous job to recruit a player of this stature. This is a position that's been on our radar for a long time now and we have managed to get a player that we all wanted so I'm really happy. The push and drive of Arteta to get this transfer over the line cannot be understated and make no mistake Jesus was a man in demand. In fact according to Fabrizio Romano three clubs tried to hijack the Gabriel Jesus deal until Sunday the June the 26th but he always wanted Arsenal as the priority. The likes of Spurs, Chelsea, Madrid all actively tried to sign this player but despite of that the relationship between Arteta and Edu that alongside the prospect of being Arsenal's main man the number nine it looks like it's done the job and when asked on Arteta, Jesus says we spoke a couple of times about the club, about the players, about the project, the future of the club, it was good, it was amazing. I believe 100% in Mikel, I have a very good time with him before, he's a very good guy and a very good coach. Pep Guardiola has built such a super team, it's so hard to replicate that, to take a piece of their jigsaw to bring him into Arsenal Football Club, it will only further boost our own project and hopefully excel us to the next level. But I think it's also time that we bring break down the player and truly understand what could make him a success at Arsenal Football Club and why Arsenal pursued him so heavily. The first thing we have to talk about is the pressing. Gabriel Jesus, described by Pep Guardiola, is the best pressing striker in world football. With Gabriel Jesus, what you're getting is a guy that will set the tone from the front. He is a player that by nature will want to press and be on the front foot. Ultimately, that elevates the Arsenal press because what it does is it allows for the other younger Arsenal players to follow suit and what that should lead to next season as Arsenal being a far better pressing team, far more aggressive, winning that ball back, caging teams in, sustaining pressure and hopefully scoring more goals. But in terms of those goals and where they come from, Jesus is a player that has showcased over his time at Man City that no matter where you put him as a left wing, as a right wing, as a centre forward, as the stats show, this guy finds a way to contribute in all of those positions. Just by signing one player, Arteta has essentially strengthened all parts of his attack. But when it comes to his main position, as the player says himself, I am a number nine. I'm a striker and I thank God every day that I can be alive and that I can play in three or four different positions. But I think my position is the nine. Last year at Man City, Guardiola deployed him as more of a right winger and even though he showed good levels of that position, he has come into Arsenal to establish himself as one of the best centre forwards in world football, whether that's a false nine or as a goal scorer. As the number suggests, he's going to play as our number nine. 
And here's a stat for you guys that in 47 goals scored in the Premier League, Jesus is still yet to end up on the losing side, winning 44 games and drawing three in games that he has scored. If that trend was to hopefully continue, that means that every time Jesus scores, Arsenal might not lose a game. Of course, it's something that we'll have to wait and see. But this is where we get to the next part of what he offers Arsenal and that is movement. Gabriel Jesus has scored more Premier League goals from exclusively inside the box than any other player in the competition's history, as all 58 of his goals have come inside the box. Last season, how many times did you see the Arsenal wingers get the ball to the byline and look for a cutback? And the Arsenal striker, whether Lacazette or someone else, just did not offer the movement to attack the ball and score the goal. That changes with Gabriel Jesus, who is a striker that will always break his neck to get onto the ball to make the movement. And that's exactly why he scores so many goals inside the box. Some fans might call him a tapping merchant, but I myself appreciate his movement and hopefully we all truly see how important that movement is going into next season. Arsenal are signing a striker that's averaged a goal every 160 minutes, ranking him fifth currently in terms of Premier League players. But all that excitement to one side, I'm not trying to sell you guys a dream that Jesus is your perfect, perfect striker. And the clear black mark for me is the fact that thus far in his career, despite playing for Man City, he's yet to score 20 league goals. Now, yes, he's never started more than 21 league games but he's also consistently underperformed his expected goals. I think the biggest factor is his ball striking while he can hit a ball isn't ultimately that reliable. That being said, if we're training and refining of his game, Arteta can address that then what Arsenal could have on their hands for the price that go £45 million, a full-time Premier League winner and a player entering the peak of his powers. This might be one of the best signings that Mikel Arteta has made. Will that be the case? How good would Jesus be and how many goals is he going to score? But what are your own thoughts on Jesus signing for Arsenal and how happy are you that he is going to be an Arsenal player going into next season? A Daily Star exclusive says that Manchester United and Arsenal are on a transfer collision course again, this time over Serge Gnabry. Gnabry is up for grabs at a cut price of £40 million as Bayern Munich wants to cash in on him this summer, rather than losing for nothing. It's no secret that Arsenal want to sign a wide forward but this specific report I'm not trusting too much. I don't think it's ultimately too reliable and it could be guesswork. That being said, we've also got an update from the reliable Ben Jacobs saying that Gnabry is on Arsenal's radar for sure for around £60 million, not too dissimilar to Rafinha. But what's very interesting is that Arsenal have kept bidding for Rafinha and not put down the £60 million on the table. If they want Serge Gnabry, they will have to be more decisive. I think what that means is that Arsenal obviously appreciate Gnabry, they understand there might be an opportunity, while well, according to Fabrizio Romano, understands that Arsenal are not working to sign Serge Gnabry. He is not in the list as things stand. Arsenal are now focused on different targets. That other target has obviously been Rafinha but he is not coming to the Emirates Stadium, he's on his way to Barcelona. With him soon to be off the market, it now poses the question towards Arsenal of will they firm up the interest and enter negotiations with Bayern Munich because thus far no team has made an offer for Gnabry, he's available in the market. And as I have said so many times, financially yes, Arsenal can make it happen. But with there also being reports now linking Gnabry with a move to Man City, when you have a player of this quality available on the market as an opportunity, I'm not so surprised to hear the likes of City, United and other clubs that have the finances looking at Gnabry as a serious option. According to Gianluca Di Marcio, Paulo Dybala is starting to evaluate offers from England and Spain. Arsenal of course could sign him on a free transfer and we have spoken about the player on this channel on numerous occasions, as quite a few decent reports have confirmed that Arsenal have lacked the player had genuine interest. And as Di Marcio says, offers from England have arrived, or are Arsenal one of those teams? I'm not quite sure because he's a false nine pro profile and with the signing of Gabriel Jesus, Arsenal have got that false line player there and there. But despite that signing, Arsenal are clearly still looking to strengthen their front line but ultimately I just don't think he's the profile that Arsenal need as their priority because he's just not the out and out wide forward. Moving on to the update on Lissandro Martinez. This is a player that Arsenal and Manchester United are battling for as things stands and things are starting to heat up. Fabrizio Romano says that Martinez and his camp will now make it clear again with the 
Ajax board, he only wants Premier League football, so he wants to make a choice between Arsenal and Man United's proposals, hoping for Ajax to let him go. Eric Ten Hag, the United manager, is confident on this deal. He is pushing again. I'm not quite sure why Arsenal are still there if Ten Hag is so confident, and surely if they're making offers, if they're still negotiating, that is with the indication that the player hasn't made his mind up and he's still open to coming to Arsenal, despite of the obvious relationship with Eric Ten Hag. According to the Mail, Arsenal are ready to raise their current £38 million offer for Lissandro Martinez as they compete with Manchester United. Martinez is valued at £43 million, with Arsenal by no means being out of the race and Mikel Arteta are keen to add a defender this summer. £38 million to £42 million isn't too far away and I can actually expect Arsenal to agree a deal. My only concern is that Eric Ten Hag connection seems to be low-key decisive. I still think Arsenal have a chance but I've also seen some other reports from other reliable sources saying that Arsenal have actually walked away from a transfer despite of that the likes of Fabrizio Romano and David Ornstein have both confirmed that Arsenal are still working and have a brand new meeting scheduled very soon with Ajax. And in my personal opinion as things stands I think United are the favourites and as much as I would love to see Martinez at the Emirates Stadium that Eric Ten Hag factor and that confidence for me is low-key worrying. Let's give a gargantuan welcome back to Kieran Tierney who's returned to Arsenal pre-season training. KT Tesco's finest is back to full fitness and that's fantastic to see, hypothetically speaking only. If we were to sign the Martinez type of player that left back profile, do you think that Kieran Tierney could be in a bit of trouble? Now let's talk about Amadou Onana. The reliable Belgian journalist in Sacha Tavoleri has confirmed that Arsenal are looking at the player, a 6 foot 5 Belgian international 20 year old defensive midfielder that plays for Lille. But according to Sky Sports News, West Ham have had a 23 million euro bid rejected for the player as the Premier League side considered returning with a brand new offer. He broke through in league earn last season but I'm not going to come out and say I'm an expert on the player because I haven't watched the player play too often but at the same time the targeting of a profile over Onana, a player that is a defensive midfielder and surely a backup to Thomas Partey. In an ideal scenario I would love to see Arsenal sign a number 6 type of profile that excels in Partey's categories but also is a dual winner. And moving on to the other Arsenal news today and starting off with the future of Hector Bellerin. As according to reports in Spain in recent days Villarreal have contacted Arsenal and Bayern's agent to ask for information about him. Unai Emery is a fan of Bayern and Arsenal value him at 10 million euros. Bayern only has one year left on his Arsenal contract and for a price tag of 10 million euros it's not too much and if you told me about that price tag back in 2015 when Bayern broke onto the scene I would have laughed at you but we are now in 2022 and unfortunately Hecky B just isn't that player that he once used to be. According According to the Telegraph, a Premier League international footballer has been arrested in North London on suspicion of rape. The player is in his late 20s and cannot be named for legal reasons and is currently in custody being quizzed over an alleged attack last month. The police have said that the man was arrested at his address in Barnet. The player is internationally renowned and it's unclear now whether he will play in his club's pre-season fixture schedule. The player is also due to play in the World Cup in Qatar this November. Who on earth is this player now of course with Arsenal being a team in North London and likewise Spurs there's a lot of people that are speculating and accusing players actually trying to play the guess who game but in my opinion whether it's a Spurs player or an Arsenal player to be going out there to accusing people of such a massive massive thing without any actual evidence that these are the guys or confirmation of the player's name it's a very stupid and naive thing to do and I think it's far more important that we wait as people to understand if this is real who it is before we go out there and accuse people of things they might not have done. Now that is the video there and there so hopefully you guys have enjoyed and if you have don't forget to smash a like and subscribe to the channel if you are new. If you want to win that brand new Arsenal home kit the links are down below follow your boy on the Instagram the Twitter and all of the socials. Now that was today's episode of the Transfers FC and yes Arsenal have other targets but as of today all we can say is a gargantuan welcome to Arsenal Mr Gabriel Jesus hopefully you score goals and win Arsenal a few trophies until then though take care of yourselves and a bit.